Hey there, everyone, and welcome to the Kennedy Space Center. This is our first time here ever. I'm super excited to be here. I've been wanting to come here for a long, long time here with my buddy Jake. Looking forward to experiencing the whole thing with you. I decided to actually buy an annual pass because that's how much I expect to come back in the future and share more of this. We're going to start it off first with a little bit of a bus tour around the Kennedy Space Center, kind of get acquainted with it and see more. Let's get started with the day. Check it out. One of the most expensive things I think man has ever created, if I have my facts correct, the International Space Station, all the country's flags right there. You can see them. So, so cool. Again, this is our first time here, so I'm kind of just going to take a little self-guided tour just a bit. Walk around, see what there is to see here. We will be back, don't you worry. I'm a big fan of space and learning about these things. Oh, so cool. All right, Jake, you're teaching me about something here. Well, these will produce energy. The more you step on it, the more energy you can And we are- We're watching it. That rocket That right is there. so cool. So as we walk around here, we're actually producing energy on these little plates on the ground. And then throughout the day, the rocket will go off with the amount of energy that we produce. That's <laughs> super cool. Starting it off with a bus tour adventure. Let's check out more of the Kennedy Space Center and take that next leap for all Kennedy Space Center goers. Now learning that these buses are gonna take us out to the Saturn V launch site. It'll be very cool, check it out. Really interesting how they do this. They actually start you off with a photo right here. Then you board these buses, nobody here in line. It's apparently the first thing to do is the thing to do first thing in the morning. Misting fans, love those, let's head on board. And off we go on a bus tour around the Kennedy Space Center, saying farewell to the uh, shuttle booster right there. It is indeed real. You can actually hear a little movie playing as we go through here. Months later, on May 5th, astronaut Alan Shepard launched on a Mercury Redstone rocket, becoming the first American in space. This look as huge as you might think because we're kind of far away from it. They're talking about the sheer mammoth size of this building. Apparently there's a rocket on the pad right now. We'll, uh, we're going to get closer look for sure. All right, after a great bus tour, we're now going to go inside one of the visitor complexes here and take a look around. Apparently there's a rocket already on the pad, so it's going to be fun. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. We're going to head on in and see this building. Playing great music out here from the 60s here as we're waiting for the Apollo show to start. And, uh, oh, they're giving us a little fun facts, which is pretty cool. Then we're gonna go inside and uh, see the show, and then we go through even more. Please Ooh, Star Trek and so many other great uh, movies and signs of history throughout these screens before we go through those doors. Adam West, oh my gosh, Adam West, we saw him for a minute there. When I was a kid, I used to dream about flying through space. It was a journey that began 12 years before that rocket ever left the ground. And on May 5th, 1961, things finally started going right. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. We created new alloys lighter and stronger than anything seen before. Okay, great intro, and now we're gonna go see what the Apollo mission looked like in 1968. This is gonna be great. This is the firing launch control for the Apollo mission. This is not a mock-up. These are the very consoles we sat at when men first took off to fly to the moon. Okay, that was an incredible show, and now we're, okay, hold on a second. We are inside. Whoa, it's, it takes your breath away immediately as you walk over and just see this. Look at this. Look at it. The five different exhausts. The sheer size of it is unbelievable. Oh my gosh, it keeps on going. Wow, 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 wow. Oh my gosh, we're gonna go inside for a second, or we're gonna look inside. Wow, that's incredible. We can get pretty close to it too. This is unbelievable, the Saturn rocket here with those super engines right under there. Look at those, with the liquid oxygen underneath. Imagine how long it took to fill all the fuel for all of this. Just amazing. I, oh my gosh, I love this. I'm glad I got the annual pass. I could be here for a while. I'm just looking at all this. I'm, I'm imagining it on the outside. I don't think they used the tiling like they did for the space shuttle on the Saturn rockets. Pretty sure they didn't. But you can see 
the uh, the outside of the rocket here. It's incredible. And let's not forget that when this amazing rocket launches, the only thing that actually goes to the moon is this right here. We're going to walk up there. There's a little bit of a line here to take a look inside where the crew would be when they went to the moon. Hard to describe it all, just learning about all these different things. Here is this, uh, the actual module piece. I, again, there are some pieces that I'm still learning as I go, so forgive me if I'm not 100% up to speed with every little piece, but I really am super excited to learn more. But I believe this, this cone piece is the only thing that actually came back to Earth. This was the, uh, not the lunar module, but the other piece that kind of goes around and to orbit the moon right there. Very, very cool. Now, if we think about Apollo 13, and we think about that mission, which they didn't talk about, but I do know about, the error would have happened back here, right, with that, you know, we may have seen it before, that uh, the movie with Tom Hanks, a really good movie. It, um, the, the, you know, explosion happened back here, and they actually did make it home, though, which was an incredible feat, unbelievable, successful failure, but wow. It's just, just to be here next to it, it's incredible to think that they all crammed into that little space. Are you serious? So with the seats, imagine how tight it was. Yeah. But they did make it, you know, the, of course the 13 mission made it back safely. But the center of gravity of the lunar module was not in the lunar module, it was way out in the field someplace because we had attached to the lunar module a 60,000 pound dead mass. That meant that when I wanted to go right and use the controller to go right, uh, it went to some wild gyration. Yeah, that's impressive. That's impressive. The uh, pilot of the Apollo 13 mission, again, all made it back, but... It, it's, it, just imagine being in his shoes for a moment. You got this 60,000 pound dead weight up front, you heard him, and you're just trying to get back home safe and save two of your buddies. Like, just imagine that. Jake, how would you react in that situation? Um, <clears throat> calm. Well, You'd be calm, cool, and collected. I'd try to be calm, cool, and collected, <clears throat> and then... Uh, I, I need to go through years of training. Yes, yes, of And course. I realize I don't have years of training. Right. Uh, and then we'd be dead. No, no. <laughs> we'd make it back safe and sound. <laughs> It's, it's amazing, it's just incredible. Sure enough, the SLS is actually on the pad right now. I'm so glad I brought my long lens. I'm gonna switch it out right now and show it to you. Let's go check it out. There it is, the SLS, Space Launch System. It's gonna bring us to the gateway at the moon eventually, and then Mars, maybe one day in the future. So exciting to see it out there on the pad. Really incredible shot we've got of it today. Wow, so glad we're out here taking a look at it. I'm super excited that we actually caught it on the pad. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable to see SLS out there. And one day for sure we're going to see a launch from here. It's going to happen for sure. Still walking under the Saturn, by the way, Saturn rocket. One giant leap for mankind. And check it out. Jake's telling me we're under stage two now. It just keeps going. Been walking forever. <laughs> just keep walking. And are we going to get something from Moon Rock Cafe? Is it going to rock out loud? Good. Incredible. Look at the camera systems on them. You know, I'm thinking to myself, I know we've got an advanced camera that I'm using right here. But imagine, you think that one's probably even more advanced than what we have now, considering that was in like the 60s? It actually might be, but I doubt it. I doubt it. Imagine that the only thing between you and instant death is this, is this little piece of glass. It's just, that's, that's scary. That's just terrifying. So, by the way, you probably can't drive this on I-4. If you look very carefully at these wheels, they're just like a, it's like a chicken wire thing going on on the outside meant to go through that moon dust, which is really, really cool. I like that a lot. Here's another moon rover here. Where you can see they, I think this is the test one, yeah. Okay, so this is the test one that they use, the lunar rover, with real tires. See the difference? Imagine having to think through all that. It's like, oh, what kind of tire do we need to go on the, the moon? Which is basically just a huge ball of super fine dust. Check out the uh, fuel tank right there within the Saturn rocket. I mean, that's, that's so, so cool. I'm learning so much. Jake's an expert, by the way. He's got, he got all the facts here as we're learning. I like space. I love it too, I'm telling you. And we're going through. I gotta go in the vault, so if I don't if I don't come back, you know where I'm locked up. So some someone come find me. We're gonna head into the treasures gallery. Wait a minute. Are you serious? This is the real oh my gosh. This is actually one of the uh, the capsules used on the Saturn launches. Oh, it's the Saturn 14 capsule. Burn marks and scraping around. The one that that made it. Jeez. This is incredible. Check out this uh, rock 33.7 billion years old, collected by Jim Irwin. Wow. That's just, and it's, it's, it's just fused in there, just for us all to take a look at. 3.7 billion year old rock from the moon. Wow. It's incredible. I can't, wait, these have got to be the water suits, right? These can't be the extravehicular activity space suit. God, it looks like something from a sci-fi movie or like a James Bond villain character. That's just, wow. 
Do they ever do they ever use these ones? No, these are all prototypes. Oh, oh prototypes. Okay. Yeah, these are all prototypes. Because I mean, like, I can see where they got the design ideas for this. And, yeah. You know, just watch a couple so sci-fi they, movies from the '60s. You'll find it penny. right. So it has to be pressurized, but still but enough. Still pick up, so right. A, huge a penny from the flat the floor. floor. Jeez. Look at that, look at the, look at that prototype right there. So these are all prototypes really. Look at this, I feel like I'm just hunching over the whole time when I'm looking at this. Real, this is, this is his real one. This is his real one from Apollo 14. 14, that's the real deal. That's moon dust on his boots and upper thighs. And this, the moon dust, by the way, I've learned before, is extremely like dangerous, sticks to everything. It's basically magnetic. Here's a replica of the flag that was planted. Apollo 14, 15, 16, 17. And I had to have that uh, metal bar going through it because obviously there's no atmosphere in the moon, so they have to be able to kind of show it kind of waving up there without any of that. Now, I don't know this for a fact, and maybe Jake knows, but I think it's, it's been totally bleached by the sun at this point. So if you were to actually find it, it's all white. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's awesome. Oh my gosh, you know I'm a big camera guy. Mm -hmm. They used a black and white television camera. I mean, I get it, it's the 60s, but wow, I can't <laughs> forget what I said earlier. Yeah, we got much better. You can go on your, with your cell phone and get a better image today. Wow. Lunar surface maps right here. Look at this. Look at those pictures. Lunar landing site. I'm guessing this is, these were taken from probably a satellite. Jim Lovell's flight suit from Apollo 13. Just the history right with this suit is incredible. Ima imagine what he was feeling when he was wearing this. I mean, you're just looking at the Earth, and you're barreling toward it, you barely know, you know, you know how to exactly how to fly, but you don't know how to fly a thing with a 60,000 dead piece of equipment in front of you. Just a hero of a man, for sure. After an incredible look inside that uh, vault, is what I'm gonna call it, we're going to the Moon Rock Cafe, we're gonna try some of their food here. See if it tastes out of this world. They got sandwiches, burgers, fries, chicken tenders. Uh, they got burgers, I'm thinking about a burger maybe. Haven't decided. Bacon double beef cheeseburger is what I'm gonna get for lunch. Here's the double bacon or double cheddar bacon burger, which looks really good. I'm looking forward to giving it a try. Not the, you know, most appealing looking uh, burger I've ever seen, but it does look tasty. So let's dig in, I'll let you know. Overall burger was good, not amazing. Not the best burger I ever had, but I actually had lower expectations for it than what it was. The good cheesy flavor to it. A little dry, the barbecue sauce that I put with it was perfect, went well. Good way to kind of uh, fill you up. So I liked it a lot. Um, would probably get it again. Wouldn't go out of my way for it. In terms, you know, but when I'm here, like when you're here, you're looking for food, it's not a bad option. While we're sitting here enjoying our uh, lunch here, you can see projected on the Saturn rocket, they've actually got a little show. So you can kind of enjoy this little projection on the rocket as you're, uh, as you're enjoying your meal. Check this out. It's uh, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And that is not a golf club. That is some kind of rock collector, looks like. But wow, that's super cool. I think uh, Jake, oh wait, are you making tracks, Jake? I am. Wait. I was. Oh my gosh, my footprint, oh my I'm walking on the moon. That's so cool. Oh wait, we can touch a moon rock. Yeah. All right, need some hand sanitizer. I have to do oh, it. It's so smooth. Piece of the moon. Oh wow. That's incredible. Very cool. So the launch escape system was capable of pulling the command module away over the ocean. Here's the astronaut van to get the astronauts to launch site. And here's the memorial for those who uh, were lost on Apollo 1. A nice tribute for them. Probably not going to film in here because I, I don't really believe in filming in tribute areas. So I'll let you know how it is. Outside of the uh, tribute area now, really a wonderful tribute to the three men and Apollo 1. And they honored their memory really well. I really did like, talked about their family life. Really, really nice. Now walking on the entryway that Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong others have walked on when they went on the shuttle. We're actually walking on it. We're walking where Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong. Look how cramped this is. My gosh, there's barely any room to breathe, but you know, still such a such an opportunity to go. There's a lunar module. Imagine being in here and you can, you can kind of see where Tom Hanks would have been. On that left-hand side, looking out that window, just to give you an example. I know we're referencing that movie quite a bit, but one giant leap for merchandise here in the gift shop. As we take a look, we we'll probably get one or two things to remember our adventure. Okay, among the many things I will probably be purchasing from here, I think at least one of them is going to be this uh, space food. Ooh, they got a vanilla. Oh wait, hang on, Jake. They got a vanilla ice cream between two chocolate wafers. So you can either the Neapolitan one or just the vanilla one. Make sure you're being greater than average. And ooh, I like this NASA hat with the scrambled eggs on top. Oh wow. I got a lot of SpaceX, wow, I love this. The Crew Dragon, Dragon, SpaceX shirts. 
Apparently there's, oh my gosh, look at the patches. Okay, they got a lot of cool ones here. I don't know, how much is this? Uh, $30 for those four patches. Don't think that's gonna happen, but so cool. Ooh, and the Apollo 2 jackets. Oh my gosh, I might need it. How much is this? I need to, hold on. Now this is only stop one. Basically, we were in the main building for a little bit, but not that long. We're now going back to the main building. We got some rides, they got exhibits, they got lots of things to see there as well. So, this is gonna be great. Freeze-dried ice cream. Great flavor, really good. The, um, doesn't quite cool you off in the Florida heat like ice cream usually does, but to be expected. I like it, fun snack. The chocolate piece is more out of this world. Yeah, I like it a lot. Back on the bus we go to a whole new world. I really like the floor in the bus. Walking on up to the moon. Off the bus now, and now going to experience the space shuttle. That is the Atlantis booster. We're gonna go inside this building it's enormous, it's incredibly huge. And we're gonna check out this incredible shuttle. I'm very excited for this. Yeah, as you can see, this looks like a replica, at least part of it does on this, the bottom part here. But I know this, this part I think is real. Wow. Okay, we are uh, continuing to walk around the building here. It's just like a long circle that makes its way around until we see the thing we're here to see, the shuttle. Now, the line's not as long as other things that we've seen before, but three minutes to actually just see the shuttle in this line. Okay, here we are on the first preview show of the Atlantis experience. But we will, and once we're in orbit, we go to work. We want to take all kinds of cargo up there in addition to the people. Silica foam tires. Thousands of them. Okay, we are now going into the, oh, next room. All right, next, oh wow, really cool, like 360 looking theater here to uh, prepare ourselves for Atlantis. Atlantis. Oh my gosh. Okay, I got a little tear. I got a little tear going on. Oh my gosh. Okay, first of all, the cinematography in the pre-show was incredible. But now we are here checking out not only Atlantis, but the Hubble telescope is what that looks like over there. And then here it is. Look at it. I, I can't get over. I can't get over this. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be checking this out for a bit. Beautiful, absolutely incredibly beautiful shuttle that put together the International Space Station. My understanding is one of the most expensive things that humans have ever made. It's my understanding. But here it is. Basically, it looks like it's just traveling through space here with the uh, bay doors open. Wow. Taking a closer look at all the details. Look at the wings. Look at the fins here. You can see the... Uh, it's all kind of covered in like, like the padding and then there are the tiles. You can actually see the tiles that we were talking about in this show, which I, I can only record the very ending piece there. But it was just, oh my gosh. It's meant for a purpose, right? You can actually see the arm all the way out here, right there. And it looks like the arms were made or designed by the Canadians. And the, the Bay Area has the American flag, so I'm guessing that's by the Americans. I'm just, I haven't put it all together yet because I'm not super familiar with every little bit of it. But my gosh, I am loving how it's set up here and it looks like it's flying through space. Just look at the tiles here. Same ones I'm sure used on its final mission. Wow, I think it was 26 years. You can see all the way underneath, the tiles continue all the way around. And I've seen video footage and in the demo as well, but I've also seen it online, where they put it in some really, really hot oven and then take it right out and can hold it with their hands. That's how these tiles work. They just dissipate heat incredibly well. Now obviously this has been placed here intentionally, but I am like three, three and a half feet from it, right there. That's how close we are to this. I'm just taking time to take it all in. Check out the burn marks right there by, I'm guessing, I think this is um, a thrust. There's thrusters here that kind of shoot downward. You can see the burn marks there. Tiles all the way around, as we learned about. They're uh, able to cool it down. Crew quarters, that's all we have here. That's it. You, you don't live in there, you live in here, okay? Not huge, but enough for, you know, a little bit bigger than Saturn for sure. Here's the space shuttle's main engine. And they can show you the 3D printing technology here. Don't think they use that to build this one. Maybe ones of the future. Now, for comparison, water freezes at 32. Okay, cool. Uh, average campfire, that's great. Been, been there before. Uh, Fourth of July fireworks, we've seen those. Those are wonderful. Quartz sand turns into glass at uh, 4,172. Boiling point of copper 
And if we continue on a bit, 6,000 degrees is the temperature of these engines. To give you an idea, you can probably hear me in a different tone when I'm standing right in the center. That's a pretty cool engine. Here it is, Atlantis. Let's take a step inside. Walk in here, and obviously it's not this roomy because they split it apart. You can get an idea of some of the controls. Whoa, that is so, so cool. Where you'd uh, navigate something. I, you know, I know I'm kind of putting movies into comparison here. Remember Space Cowboys? I feel like you're holding on to a few of these controls, making things happen. Wow, that is very, very cool. I need a picture of one of these for sure. For your lavish bathroom needs, you can find this wonderfully technologically advanced toilet for astronauts. Some of these simulators are really cool where you can kind of learn how to use these tools in space. Wow. Now here's a replica of the uh, Hubble Space Telescope, an extremely large piece of scientific equipment you can find here. So, so cool. I love it. Just imagine it flying around our planet taking some incredible pictures. Beautiful science, things that we have seen through the uh, Hubble telescope. Here's a little prototype that was used to kind of get the idea started for some of those uh, space shuttles that we see today. You can actually see how that transition happens right here. I mean, it's an emotional, it's an emotional experience when that door opens and you see it. Welcome home, Atlantis. Ah, oh, so cool. All right, let's keep walking around. Now we're at a section to learn more about the ISS, International Space Station. And I'm not sure if I'm allowed to crawl through there or not. Sure would be cool though. Yeah, it's for kids only, but you could go through there if you're a younger one and actually experience like a smaller mini version of the International Space Station. Very cool. Stretching? Okay, you can stretch that Achilles, you go ahead. We're looking at the different turns of the, uh, wow, I, I can't even imagine as it's flying through, oh, the sonic boom. And then down here, there's actually some like interactive areas. This is so, oh, this is a slide, oh my gosh. Okay, well, I know where we're going next. <laughs> we're going down the slide as if we're the space shuttle. Ready for this, Jake? Yeah, ready. All right, hey, wait, wait, hold oh, okay. on, you gotta wait, you gotta wait. Okay, ready? Ready, three, ready. Two, one. Two, one. Touchdown. Man, you got a head start. Whoa, oh my gosh, that's fast. <laughs> that's pretty great. Really? Yeah. So that you see like, the oh, wow. like your first touchdown. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna see a lot more of what's to do around here. It looks super cool. We're gonna do the space launch experience though. It's like a, not a ride, it's just kind of an experience. I don't know if we can film or not in there, but we'll find out. So I found out we can film everywhere here in the queue, for example, but we cannot film in the ride. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on the ride, or attraction, or experience, and then tell you about it after. Okay, here we go. I think we can film in this part, but then there's another part where I don't think we can. These guys were designed to get clean, refurbished, and then used again on another mission. And in case something does go wrong. Take a moment to memorize these now. <laughs> get it on. Now it's time for you to experience the sensation of the launch. First hand from inside the show. Let's do it. Already the pre-show is awesome. It's just incredible, the moving arms and all that, and the smoke and the fire and all that. It wasn't really fire, but it was really cool. I think we're about to go in, and I can't record in there. Just got off the simulator. Let me, first I'm gonna show you, this is where you'd sit if you wanted to opt out of the actual movement, but I recommend not doing that. It was awesome. The rumble of the engine, space above you, the emergency alarms. You, you, you feel some of the Gs, not all of the Gs, but some of the Gs. Then you come back and you're looking at, at Earth from up here in space. They they did this so well. I don't I have never been in a in in a more incredible space flight simulation in my life. That's how good it was. That's how good this was. I know what you're saying, Michael, about like things like Mission Space. No, no way. This is a huge winner. As we walk around here, we can actually see all the flights by all the uh, shuttles. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I would do it again, and I would highly recommend it. If you like space travel, you gotta try that one. Even the exit area is awesome. It's not just into a gift shop. You're learning about the different missions, like even the selfies from within, you know, out, we're in space. You've seen selfies from space here. And as we make it around here, we, we did see the um, Challenger plaque, and here's the Columbia one, too. Remembering uh, all those who didn't make it back. I want to reiterate, and Jake told me, we've only done two buildings. Like, I, I want to play with these things, and I can't. I want to like run through and see other attractions. And they're, they're all ready to, for the demo. I, I cannot, man, I just love this. So this is the one that brought them to the, the yeah, pad. The, no, no, so sorry. did you want to, like, I was thinking one for a camper, not for, you know, space launches, but I'm just kidding. It's, and here's the memorial for um, Challenger in Columbia. Not going to film in there. You know my feelings on that. I'll uh, just go and appreciate it. That one hit me pretty hard. Yeah, it did. 
I don't know. It, it, um, mm, um, it reminds us that our problems of the everyday are inconsequential. All right, moving on. Sorry, I just that one. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty grabbing one. I, I remember it. I was alive during all those, so I do remember it. Okay, uh, onward. Here is a uh, astronaut's living quarters. Here, I it's got like the padded stuff all over. You can do a little work on your laptop. Maybe listen to. Uh, well, I haven't seen a CD player like that in a long time. But uh, yeah, pictures of family up there, and just uh, rest in your little cocoon, free floating in space. A good night's sleep on the ISS is very important. Now this is showing you the, uh, remember what I was talking about, the ISS kind of walk through tunnel for kids? There it is, up above us. That's pretty cool. If you got younger ones, you, you gotta try that. That's awesome. I'm gonna be getting something. I'm not even sure if it's from here or a different uh, gift shop, but I'm loving this so much, I need something. I'm tempted by a lot of things here, but apparently there's a big gift shop, which I wanna go to, and we might come back here, so. Hold that gift thought. Gotta tell you, I love seeing the uh, Atlantis in there. Space, the space shuttle exhibit, highly recommend it. There's apparently a lot more things to do and see. Luckily, we got the annual pass, so that's good. We're gonna go to Gateway now, which just opened like a month and a half ago here. So we're gonna see Gateway, which is supposed to be about the moon mission and building the gateway onward. Check out the spinning Orion capsule that Jake's telling me about from uh, SLS. This is awesome. That's so cool. Spinning round and round, just like it's a as a piece of history. That is so cool. You can see the astronauts through the windows there. I love it. Check out some of these rockets that are up here. I, I wish I knew the name of all of them. The one lying flat is a Saturn One rocket. Jake told me about that one. Look at these. Just incredible. The newest building here at the Kennedy Space Center. Made it into the Gateway building and I already can feel the difference. Jake was telling me this is the space port. It's gonna be in space. It's gonna connect all of us together and then be the launching point for other things. That happens, so we're gonna kind of walk through this, I'm gonna show it to you. That's gonna be Gateway right there. It's another station in space to use, my guess is, for refueling and to take us to that red planet off in the distance. Oh my gosh, you gotta be, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. I just, I'm just gonna give you like a, like a walking tour here because I'm just like blown away. The future of space flight, that's what this is. That's what we're seeing in front of us here, from models to truly flown aircraft. There's a giant SpaceX, ro oh, it's not Blue Origin, this is SpaceX. Is this a Falcon 9 rocket? I think it is, is this Falcon 9? Is this a Falcon rocket, Falcon 9? Yeah, Fal I don't know which Falcon is, not, maybe not 9, but it's one of the Falcon rockets. Wow, look at this. This is the future right here, this is future. You can see they've, he's, we got, uh, Wow, I'm just, you can tell I'm like blown away. I am blown away. From Lockheed Martin, here's a interactive deep space habitat. I'm gonna walk in here, I'm gonna show you a little bit. Just, I mean, I'm learning as you are here, potable water. We got some food here, it's all been uh, carefully wrapped up. I'll take a bite of that cookie, thank you very much. Some water, shelving areas. I'm guessing this is where the astronauts would sleep. Love this, oh wait, do not hang from, demonstration purposes only, this is definitely a workout bar. Up there, this is how they'll access another part of the uh, ship over there. This is maybe a science experiment. They stick their hands through here and work with moon rocks, upside down grass. They've got heads of lettuce, a 3D printer. Okay, I've got one of those. I love it. Very, very cool. And even more all around. That is not probably for video games. It's probably for like the interactive arm outside the ship, or maybe a a, 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 a rover or something like that. Wait, uh, I almost had it. Uh, Checking out the Artemis system right here. In the, uh, you can see there's like a console area where you can test the engines, make sure they're working perfectly. It's the Cargo Dragon. You can see it's an official flight flown artifact right here where you can see the burn marks on it, little chunks removed right there, the thrusters. It's just amazing. The Boeing Starliner, another one coming soon. Looks like there are six seats, maybe seven, maybe five seats in there, five seats. But it's again, one of these capsules. It's gonna take us back into space. Ah, oh, that's cool. The Falcon. I don't know which number it is. SpaceX, all the way down there. Now, if you're thinking it's all SpaceX and Blue Origin, you are wrong. There's the Dream Chaser here by Sierra Space. And I'm kind of looking at the video here, but I've read about it. It's meant to actually be just a smaller space plane, basically, that takes you from one side of the world to another. Super easy, super convenient and it can land on any commercial runway in the world. Designed to transfer crew or cargo to low Earth orbit. 
So International Space Station could be a destination of Dream Chaser. This is a really cool exhibit. You use your shadow here to learn more about the things that are happening around us from the Earth here. There's a comet over there. You can see some of our uh, satellites. I don't know which one this is right here. Oh, this is Venus. And that's the uh, Maglion. Maglion? Yeah. Wow. Here's Andromeda as we see it, and here it is under ultraviolet light. It looks like a very different place. <laughs> looks cool though. Wow, I love the tech here. Okay, now it's time for a new attraction here at Gateway. It's the Choose Your Journey. Cosmic Wonders, Red Planet, Daring Explorers, or Uncharted Worlds. We decided on Cosmic Wonder. We'll experience that together. It looks super cool. This is the Kennedy Space Center spaceport lobby area. Kind of looks like Space 220 to me, the lobby area, which is pretty cool. The fact that they're pretty close. The other different gates we're going to check in. Not sure what we're doing, but it's going to be fun. I haven't figured it out if we're going to which show we're going to because it was kind of looked like both shows, but I think we're going to uh, Cosmic Wonders. We'll see. It's time to start boarding soon. Booking has never been this easy. To so go to Uncharted Worlds. Can't wait. Yeah. You got your, you got your boarding pass oh, there too? Yeah, Delta. App. Delta? Okay, all right. I, was, I, was gonna, I thought we were on American. No, that's cool. 25 seconds to lift off. Let's experience those other worlds. Here we go. Don't know if I can record yet, but we'll find out. No idea what this is, but I gotta put the camera down. Talk to you after. Okay, gotta tell you, that was really, really cool. I liked it a lot. There are some more advanced rides that we've been on, no question, but it really made you feel like you're exploring strange new worlds. Like the idea of it in total, there were some special effects with like wind effects and they, you know, feeling like you're kind of going through the atmosphere. Really, really cool, really like that idea. There's, um, the screen resolution could be a tiny bit better, but overall really enjoyed it. You gotta get a middle seat with that one though, that's the problem. If you're on one of the far edges, there's like a, there's like a foot shadow in your way. It's, it's, it's not a huge deal, but it's something they can work on. I was super impressed with that one. Really, really impressed. Definitely want to try the other ones here at uh, Spaceport KSC. Best comparison for this one would be Flight of Passage. Wasn't quite as much movement or clarity in the screen or immersion, but that's the general idea. Liked it a lot. Would definitely go again. I want to try another one of those shows. Super long line now though, so glad we did it when we did. There's so much to see here, it's impossible to see it all in one day. Absolutely impossible. Loving it all, but now we're gonna go to the uh, the main gift shop. It's gonna be great. We'll be back for sure. This is amazing. Here we are at the NASA Space Shop, the world's largest space gift shop. Let's go check it out. I could spend all day in here pointing out different merch, but it's gonna walk out around with you. We'll have to take a closer look another day because just taking it all in. Tough to do. Gosh, I love the hats and the sweatshirts. I saw the uh, flight jackets, which I really liked. It's just so much cool stuff. It's not just NASA too, there's SpaceX and Occupy Mars and just, wow, Crew Dragon. Pants and shirts and hats and mugs and plush toys. So much, wow. Lounge fly bags are really popular. I don't know if you've seen these, but uh, they look super, super nice. Hard to fathom how much they have in here. Mugs and magnets and hats and plushies and so much. I keep walking around seeing more. Found a great shirt to celebrate our trip here. It's actually, it was on clearance. I found it. Go for launch. Kennedy Space Center with that awesome. Is that the, uh, I can't tell if it's the Saturn. It might be. Tough to tell. But I love it. Great size. Great shirt. Such an incredible day today. We left plenty to do next time as well. I loved this so much. I'm so glad we went out and explored and we'll be doing this again for sure in the future. Thank you so much for watching and a special thanks to our patrons for making all of our videos possible. Until next time, have a magical day and I'll see you real soon in space.